Welcome, amazing agents from across the country. Today is Thursday, August 30th, 2018, and this is Mastermind Call number 192. I got my incredible partners on the call. Um, before I turn it over to them, I did want to announce we had a really tough decision last week. We had five great success stories. Um, you know, a new uh, client in Florida, the three had de had three deals, but um, we decided to give the win of the week to Mary Hawley. Um, kind of interesting, you know, we, we really um, recommend a holistic approach. You know, help these people in any way you can and contact everybody involved. And for some reason, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a number of agents have really good success contacting the attorneys. And Mary is getting some extraordinary uh, success contacting the attorneys. And one of you last call had asked me, Another one of our agents, Camille, I was hoping she would be on the call. Camille Muller is the agent that's also having very good success with attorneys. If you want to go in our Facebook group and look at her comments there. And let's see, the other news I want to announce before I forget, next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we will be doing our regular monthly role play call. And then finally, um, we are we still want to have an act, ask the expert attorney call. We have just not been able to find a reliable attorney that uh, will show up for one of these calls. If any of y'all have a really good probate attorney, especially if he often acts as a court-appointed uh, uh, personal representative, uh, would you let us know? We would love to invite him on a call and have you all pick his brain. So far, we've had a couple of them that uh, that have kind of flaked out on us. So that is in the works. We may have to punt that till October. But um, I think that's all my unfinished business. Tim, what would you like to share with the group? Um, I think I got my phone fixed. And uh, <laughs> good. And, and I'm sure it's going to stay fixed now. Um, no, nothing really. I mean, we're just jamming along. We. Uh, uh, I think we've kind of kept people abreast of our, our saga. We've moved the entire uh, support organization into a new building about two weeks ago, and we're gradually getting back to normal there. We didn't slow down much. We didn't miss anything, but it's always crazy to move, and uh, things are going well, and everybody's happy and has a lot more room to work and do great things for you. So we're excited about that, and uh, continue serving you well. Excellent. Uh, Tom, what would you like to share with the group? Just remind everybody that we're always here to help. That's uh, what we want. And if you need us, just send an email to support at allthelieds.com. Or if you're in your account area under support, there's a contact contact us area. Just uh, describe what you're looking for. We track those items and assign it to the appropriate people to get back to you as quickly as possible. So please reach out if you got any questions pertaining to anything, mailings, letters that, that go out. Uh, you know, ISA programs, uh, websites, just any general support information on data and things like that. Just let us know. That's it. All right. Excellent. And like you said, be as specific as possible. We've got a whole stat. We've got a couple dozen people here to help you. If you're real specific about exactly what you need help with, the best person will get back to you quickly. And we only have two people in the queue, guys. There's about 100 of you uh, on the line, so please participate. Hit star six and hit one. We want to hear wins, obviously. We had five great ones last week. We want to hear challenges. We are here to help you, so nothing is off limits. I promise you, whatever you question you may have or issue you're having, there's probably five other people on the call that could benefit from from hearing about it. And um, one person I asked to chime in, our first person in the queue is Amy Mosley. Amy, can you hear me? Yep, uh-huh, I can hear you. Yeah, the reason I asked you to chime in, you had a referral for a, for an agent, and I know you posted on Facebook, and did you, you did not get a response, correct? I didn't, but I think I may have somebody, but it sure can't hurt to ask on here. Yeah, we, we really want to try to, you know, uh, refer deals to each other, especially, you know, somebody you know who is going to take good care of the people. So, Amy, tell them uh, where the referral is and how to contact you. Okay, it's um, in Linwood, K 
California, which is in LA. And uh, my number is 949-315-9326. And the interesting part is I've been um, following up because it had deceased information and it had an address that was in my area. And so I kept following up, and so now I've got an appointment. Um, there's a care The woman lives out of the area, but there's a caretaker in the house. So I was making the appointment to go see the house with a caretaker, and she's like, no, it's not in Orange County. It's in Linwood. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, all this time I've been working on this, and now I got this far, and it's – I don't know why it showed – you know, the wrong, the area under deceased address, I just assumed that's where it was, the property, and it wasn't. Yeah, we we talk about that a lot, Amy. The last known address, you really shouldn't pay too much attention to that. It It is just that. It's the last place that they, that they receive mail at. Very often, it's a care facility, hospice, um, you know, living with relatives, and the property often is elsewhere now in in what you probably had there is an ancillary uh probate they probably had significant assets in the county you're in and they happen to have a uh a real a piece of real estate elsewhere you're you're relatively certain after talking to them that there is no real estate in your area yeah the, the deceased person was living with their family at the address in my a area but they own this home in um in Linwood. Interesting. So they filed the primary probate where they were living, but the real estate was elsewhere. Yeah, that yeah. that happens. Not often. It does happen, but good for you to, you know, turn it into a referral. And please anybody um on the line who can uh go take a, a listing, Mary will be glad to uh uh to refer that to you. Or Amy, I'm sorry. It's Amy will be glad to refer it to you. Yeah, if somebody doesn't Anything else we we go ahead, Amy. If they don't get back to me fairly soon, I, I do have somebody else, but I was hoping to refer it to somebody through the group, but we'll see how quickly. Yeah, <laughs> and you did everything right. You posted it on the Facebook group, and now I we broadcast it on the call, so hopefully. What what county is Linwood in? It's in L.A. Oh, okay. Jeez, we ought to be able to find somebody for you in L.A. So, All right, well, I hope that turns out. I hope you find somebody in the group. We'll reach right back out to you. Any, anything else we can do for you today? Amy? That's it. That's it. All right. We have two more. Thank you very much. We have two more in the queue. Next up is phone number ending in 7671. You're up next. Hi, this is Barbara from Central Florida. Uh, I have two questions. Hey, Barbara. But before I do that, hi. Uh, I just wanted to thank the Mailbox Motivated People. Uh, my mailing went out as scheduled. I ordered uh, 25 extra of my brochures. I got them very quickly, and I already distributed some to an attorney that we already work with in my office. So I just excellent. want to the excellent, excellent job. Thank you. Uh, I do have oh, thank two, you. Que two questions. You're welcome. Uh, uh, is Chad on the line? Oh no. He is not. Chad is on vacation, uh, so well, we'll be between the three of us so I'm sure we can help you. Okay. I've been going over all the you know, recordings and scripts and all that good stuff and two things came up. Uh Chad mentions a packet that you send uh, to the beneficiary or to the uh, other decision makers. Uh, before he meets with them, do we know what right. is in that packet? Yeah, what what he suggests is, it, whenever possible, try to be real clear on when you're sp speaking to the main person, if there are other people that need to be involved in the decision. And, um, you know, if you're able to get them all together at the property, great, but often they're scattered throughout the country. So typically right. what he will send them is you know a, a market analysis um you know and chad always says you know give them three different prices as is you know uh 90 days and you know investor sale you know give them give them options you know if they if, if it needs work give them a uh, as is if it 
they want to get top dollar, give them a price if it were fixed up and give them a third price, you know, for selling, you know, tomorrow or within a few days to an investor. And you would just put anything else you would put in there. If you if you have a brochure, you could certainly put your own. Um, we do have a really nice three-page brochure on our website that you can um, download or we'll be glad to print and ship it to you that really identifies you as a probate expert. But um, okay. that's pretty much what you would normally normally – Pretty much whatever you would put in front of them if you were live on a listing presentation, try to send that out to them ahead of time. Okay. And then the second question is, he also mentioned an email inviting, is that just you're inviting them on a conference call? Is that all? That yeah, is? correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, just and send out a, I mean, if they're, if they're relatively savvy, um, invite them to a go to meeting, you know, where you can get on there and show them things. But, you know, I, I find conference, well, this is a conference call. We purposely don't do go to meetings because it's easier for people to show up. And, you know, and I, I think the conference calls are sometimes just as effective, especially if you're going to get material in front of them. A conference call is generally fine. Um, if, you know, in, that what we're on right now is freeconferencing.com. If you want to set up an account on a system like this, wow. it, it uh, doesn't, co doesn't cost you anything. You get a, a call-in number and you get a code that you can give out for them to come on the call. But on the conference calls, uh, what do you have to dial the number and then conference them in? And you have to do one No, the you time? all, just, just, like you, just like you did today, you just called the same number. You have a you have a different code as the administrator, and they have a code as a participant. Oh. J just exactly the way you called into this call today the, is the way it would work. Oh, I thought uh, without this uh, free conference call dot com, you can't do it from your phone without that, right? You have to call it and get an account, right? Well, y if you wanted to invite them to and have your own account to a call, sure. Now, if you're only talking to one or two people, you can probably conference them into your phone, but I find that's kind of complicated and messy. I, okay. I like I something like them. this where, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can, and there's no cost to it, so you might as well set one up that you can use. And that's freeconferencecall.com? No, freeconferencing, C-O-N-F-E-R-E-N-C-I-N-G.com. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Thank you. There's a lot of them out there, but we, we've been using this one for years, and it works very well for us. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we have one more person in the queue. It's a very familiar name, so I know she's going to have some great stuff to share. But we got another 45 minutes of time, guys. Please participate. Hit star six and hit one. Nothing is out of bounds here. We want your participation. We must have a few other people that need help. There we got one. Good. See, every time I ask, I get another one. So I'll just ask between calls. <laughs> next up is Ellen, phone number 6337. You're up next, Ellen. Hey, Jim. I don't think I'm going to live up to that hype. Um, I just oh, you, you always do. You always do. We love you. Uh, we have our first um, probate uh, listing appointment tomorrow, which we're very excited about. It's in an incredible area. Great. We're thinking it's going to be about $900,000 duplex. So we're excited about that. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, at least it's our first probate from all the leads leads. Um, I am in Los right. Angeles, and um, Amy said her phone number so fast that I didn't get it, but I'd like Amy's number because I'd like to give her a call on that Linwood property. Yeah, send me um, – she's already gone, okay. but send me a uh, – Oh, you got I'll it, Tim? Go ahead. I'll get it to her. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, okay. I we'll get it to you, Ellen. That, that's awesome. Hi, Tim. Go ahead. Um, okay. That, that's all I have. Um, and, oh, oh, and Ellen, I was just doing the I was just doing the math here on the nine hundred thousand dollar listing. I think you you paid for our service for about twenty years, or am I exaggerating a little bit? <laughs> maybe, maybe five years. <laughs> with your a couple of months and uh, I'm going to have uh, oh, I don't 
don't think you spend that much every month, but that is awesome. And you, you know what's so exciting is you, you know, you've been with us a, a, a couple months, a few months. You haven't. You're the most competitive, by far the most competitive market in the country, and you just keep plugging away. And the nice thing is, uh, when you get paid, they they pay off very well. So you don't maybe. It'd be nice to do, you know, three, four, or five a month like some of our subscribers, but you don't have to in a market like yours. So, congratulations yeah. on hanging in there, and uh, come back less, next week, please, and let no pressure. Let us know you got the listing. Jim, one of the agents on the um, on the Facebook group. I, I hate to sound like a groupie, but one of the agents on the Facebook group, uh, Facebook group this morning posted, "Does anybody, um, are, does anybody have success with probate leads?" And they and they posted it on your Facebook, and I'm thinking about a hundred people should respond to that because I think yeah. the one thing that you guys provide that no one else can get is that you go down to the courthouse, you get the the accurate information, and no one else can provide the leads that you guys provide, um, and, and and the support and the training and the and all that stuff. I mean, I I don't want to sound like a groupie, but this is by far, I had a conversation with Tim the other day, and it's like so many um, vendors reach out to realtors constantly. I probably have 100 emails a day about oh, this great system, this great system, and they really don't care. They sell the system, and if you're successful, you're successful. If you're not, you're not. But with this group and, and the four partners in this group, you make sure that we have every opportunity to be successful. And, and I've been doing this for 19 years. I've never had that with any um, any service provider I've hired ever, not even close. So I really want to thank you. Wow. That's, um, even that, if you you are favorite, my favorite. You're, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, it, you know it, it's just I plug away because I want to return the support that you give me. I want to be able to return that support and, and let you guys know you're not wasting your time and all your your sincere efforts are not going on deaf ears and all of us I think on this call are really trying to um, to have those successes and, and really support you guys in the way we can Wow well said thank you so much and you are you are now my favorite groupie by the way we don't have many but oh. you're my favorite uh, <laughs> and you know you one thing interesting, Ellen, that you said is, I, I, and I don't know why, and it's okay. We, we notice whenever anybody needs help, there'll be 25 people that'll jump in. But a lot of times when people are looking for testimonials, they don't get, you don't get the response, and that's fine. I mean, that's why we try to solicit them on these calls, not so much that to give us a pat on the back, that, but to encourage other people that it does work. It, it really does. Um, we have an incredible number of people that come aboard and then they, they'll they drop out and then two, three months later they'll start to get deals from their original campaign and they'll come back. And we always tell people, stick with this for 90 days. And, you know, in the five years doing this, I can't, personally I can't think of a single case of anybody who has followed this program for 90 days that hasn't gotten results with it. And thank you so much for your kind words. And all four of us have seen so many – churn and burn companies over the 100 plus years we've been in the business that we really started with this with that in mind that we don't want to be another one of those companies we don't want to be a data company we want to give you everything you need to be successful so thank you so much for your kind words we really appreciate it my pleasure hey jim i i, I to chime in on what you just said and it's kind of a point that we always try to make is that we literally have have Everything that we've done since we started this company, other than you know deciding that this was a good market niche to pursue, everything we've done and everything that we've built has been based on feedback that we've gotten from you know the folks who are uh, paying us and uh, making sure that we do a good job for them. And uh, I think it's important for everybody on this call to know that we make changes every week to everything that we're doing. We make changes to the user user portal, we make changes to actually how we do our processes, how we support you and everything else. And we love the feedback. We get, you know, emails from everybody saying it'd be cool if you'd do this, it'd be cool if you do this. And anything that we get in, we take it seriously, we look at it and we have a responsibility to make that work. And 
I'll just camp on what Jim said. We've all been involved in this industry for a very long period of time, and one of the watchwords and, and kind of the, the guiding principles when we started this is we are not just looking to sell stuff and make money. We really want to see good results, have people make money, do well, and be successful. And we're trying to help people build businesses, not just sell leads and be another lead company. So please, if you if you see something that you'd like us to do or any suggestions that you have that would – make your life easier, make your life better, or something cool that we could do that would make us an even better company, we want to hear from you. So please let us know. Excellent. Tim, Ellen, thank you Tim, so much, as always. Appreciate you. Okay. Tim, don't forget to get What's that? that oh, yeah, we'll get, to, we'll get to that number. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, that sparked Ellen. As always, you were a catalyst. We got uh, five people in the queue, so you, you, you got us going. Um, next up is phone number ending in 3908. You're up next. Hey, guys. It's Sam from Richmond, Virginia. How are you? Hey, Sam. Welcome. Thanks. I just wanted to share a quick success story. Um, I had a couple of weeks ago connected with um, one of the agents in my office connected me with a, um insurance agent who does vacant home policies as well. She's um, like a traditional just home insurance, but she also does vacant home policies and construction policies and things like that. So we had connected because um, she, I gave her one of my cards and I have probate specialists listed on my on my card and she was asking me about probate and what I do and this, that, and the other. So that's how we got to talking about vacant homes. And then she actually connected me with a probate attorney this morning um, she just said, hey, would you like to meet with a probate attorney? I said, yeah. I haven't been marketing attorneys mainly because they don't – my lists in Virginia just don't have attorneys on them. Um, we tend to not use attorneys for probate. So I was able to connect with this attorney and get a better idea about why that is and how we can help each other. Um, you know, I explained the process of, of how – I get leads and where I come in and she said, well, you're coming in kind of late in the game with what I do. I'd be able to get you in way earlier than that because I deal with a lot of people who are transitioning into nursing homes and they need to make sure their will is in order and they need to get the household and all of that. And I said, absolutely. So it was just mind blowing, but to be able to sit down and say, this is what I do and this is how I help people. How can I make your job easier and how can you help me make my job easier? And we just had a great conversation. So just wanted to share that, that Good. by connecting everybody in my group, I was able to get another referral source, and it and it was going to work out really well. That is awesome, Sam. You are you are the top, uh, uh, certainly the top ISA we've ever spoken to, and and you're you're one of the best people on the phone that we deal with. And you know, you just triggered and uh, uh, something that occurred to me while you were talking. We, uh, you know, in very hyper-competitive markets, we often have agents ask us, like, people are working the death certificates. How do we get involved sooner? And we have never wanted to go there. We feel like it's predatory and it's just you don't want to be contacting someone. But what you just said is a great way to get involved much earlier, get a, get a referral from the nursing home, from the attorney. And at that point, you know, it's before the probate's filed, it's early, but it's at the point where you know there's a need because these and it, and it's a warm introduction, much better than well calling that yeah exactly who, it's know, a it's just it's just lost a, a relative a, exactly to your point it's a warm introduction it's somebody you're already working with you already trust who's saying hey this other person can help you and I trust them so instead of it it's you're a hundred times more likely to get that listing than you were just by calling somebody up you know kind of out of the blue. Um, so I yeah it's it's great and just utilizing referral sources like make sure if you're giving people business that are in your network that they're referring it back to you and you're connecting everybody everybody that you know just let them know what you do because you never know who's going to need it or you never know who you're going to talk to who can connect you to somebody else and um, so it was just that was my success story for the day I also had a question um, I know a while back. We had talked on this on the couple of conference calls. Chad had mentioned that you guys were possibly getting into divorce leads, um, and I just wanted to know if that's still happening or if there there's an update on when we might be able to get in on that. 
Jimmy, you're going to take that? that one to you. Please. Okay. Yeah, we're actively working it now. Uh, Tom and I have been working on that, and uh, we are actually in a, a short beta right now with a couple of counties that we're working, and we're moving kind of at full speed to get that ready. We've got most of the bugs out of it from a system standpoint. Uh, we're completing the last set of uh, proofs on the letters that we're working on, and uh, we're going to roll it out soon. So, yes, it is coming, and we will definitely let you know when it's ready. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks All for right. asking. Thank you, as always, Sam. Yep. All right, we got three more in the queue. Next up is phone number ending in 5952. You're up next. Hi, this is Camille from Tallahassee. How are y'all doing today? Hey. Hey, Camille, you were on the top of my list. You had some uh, some really good uh, success that I had asked you to come on the call and share. Thank you. Yeah, I had a little bit of technical difficulties getting in, so <laughs> no problem with that. <laughs> okay. But what we did was we own the um, the real estate group, the RIA here. So um, I'm also a realtor, but we're first and foremost, we're investors, my partner, Mark, and I. And so, you know, I was trying to think about, I heard on the call or on the other things about how to give instead of just asking them for leads and stuff. So we took our first batch and then I pulled from our first batch of leads, I pulled all of the email addresses for the attorneys. And I was, I've got card stock and stuff that, you know, I've got some real nice envelopes and stuff to <clears throat> do a mailing, but I just decided to go ahead and um, do an email out to all the attorneys. And um, the way we went about doing it was we asked them about coming and being a guest speaker and to our group and you know we have about 500 members and we usually have about 70 to 100 um, if we have a real special event we'll be up to 120 um, people coming to our meeting so i sent it out an email and it was like the, it was like just like seconds after i sent it back out we got immediate responses we got three immediate responses and one person even called us so what we did was we set up telephone call. I mean, we set up lunch appointments. So we've been going to lunch. We've done three. We've got another one tomorrow. Um, we've been just going to lunch and talking to the attorneys, and we talked to them about our group. But then we're like, hey, we are also looking for houses to buy. We're cash buyers. We're investors. Um, we're the complete package because we have the people to clean out. And then if and they need a quick sale and it's a hoarder's house we're able to take over it but if it's a nice retail house um, we can also list it and take care of it that way so our response has been really good um, one we didn't really like the attorney the lady that we met that attorney we weren't too impressed with her but we're also getting a feel of who we like and who we wouldn't mind working with so so far so good we're still like going to do after Labor Day, we'll do some more lunches. Excellent. So, I think you had shared that you, you felt like, were you starting to get referrals from them or you just felt like the majority well, of them were sincere about sending you One of them, yeah, one of them was like, oh my gosh, I wish I had known about y'all two weeks earlier because we had a house that we really needed to get rid of. Um, and then one of the attorneys that we talked to, um, I think it was the guy we talked to yesterday was, um, no, we talked to him on Monday. We had lunch with him on Monday. Um, he was like, well, we have a bunch that they just let go into foreclosure because it's not worth what the house is worth. You know, they owe more than the house mm. is worth. And we're sitting there, you know, it's like, wait a minute, don't just throw those away. You know, we would be willing to look at them. It might be so that, um, that you know, if they've got a mortgage that they've been paying on for like, 10 years or 15 years, um, even if they owe more than what the house is worth, it might be something that we're interested in taking over and paying them a finder's fee, the um, executrix sure. finder's fee or something for, because, shoot, if we can take over a mortgage that's been paid on for 10 to 15 years and, you know, get into the house that way, it'd be worth it. Because we've done that before sure, on, you know, private. So we've just said, you know, here's $2,000, walk away, and we'll take care of the mortgage and everything else. And um, we made 20, 
twenty one thousand on a on a deal like that that we just told them we'll walk away smart. and we'll take over the mortgage. So very smart. And if they're if they're grossly upside down, um I happen to know somebody that's closed over two thousand short sales. My my wife has a short sale company. So yeah, if you I ever, used to do you short ever need sales some help too. with that, just read through Oh, you've done yeah, them all I would so love, good. Yeah. yeah, I used to do them back in 2007, 2008. But, yeah, it's like something I wouldn't mind turning over. But Because um, I haven't had practice in a number of years. But it's, it, even them, we're just like, don't, don't just turn them back over to the bank because then your family, your mother or your father's home, you know, now is the disgrace of the neighborhood if it's going to sit there for two or three years going through the foreclosure cycle. You know, we can take it and get a nice yeah. family back into it. So. Yeah, I have to say that my Pam, my wife, has been surprised, and and I used to be active in that business before I before I helped my partner start this one. But we were surprised how often the heirs really had nothing to gain, except they didn't want to let mom and dad's house, like you said, go into disrepair, and and they mm-hmm. they wanted to see a nice family in there, and and. The nice thing on a short sale with with the deceased person, there's no financials required. It's really just sign an authorization and you're done. So yeah, yeah it was surprising to us that that how many people want to do the right thing and keep that property out of foreclosure. So and and your and idea of might... just giving them a little bit of money, I had that had never yeah. occurred to me. I think that could be brilliant depending on the circumstances. Great idea. Yeah, I mean, why not make anything? At least get like two hundred dollars. We'll pay all the closing costs and everything, you know, just to transfer the deed over to us. Um, sure. And it works out. I mean, the Believe one it. we did that I was talking about before, we just paid her two thousand dollars to walk away, and it was in foreclosure. And um, we just wholesaled it to somebody. We didn't even bring it current. We just gave them two thousand dollars. They stepped out of the deal, and we um, wholesaled to somebody else for twenty one thousand dollars. So, wow! And they Good brought it you. current and put it in their name. So, yeah. And you, what I really like, uh, what I what I hear is, you know, we have a lot of agents that come from the realtor perspective, and you know, they occasionally buy. We have investors that just invest, but the, being able to do both, and it sounds like you're really focused on doing what's best for the client. I mean, in, what do you figure, Camille? Maybe maybe ten percent of these are. Are good investor opportunities, and the other ninety percent are listings. Do you think that's about about right? I don't know. I, I'm, you know, we've done, we've done like I've done more than in when I was in Huntsville, but here we've done. My partner Mark and I have done like I think we've done four that were probate. And you know, if we do a good job, like one of the ones that we bought her house and we took it over, we didn't get a mortgage on it. We just took it over, subject to the existing. Did our, I think we did a wraparound on hers, but I gave her some money so that she could get into her other house, and then we fixed it up and sold it. But um, with her, I mean, she still calls us. She calls us like it's been like a year now, and she'll still call us for advice. So I mean, she's like a and. We feel like if she knows somebody, she's going to tell them to call us. But yeah, you just know, try to not great. be the I mean, real guys... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, well, we just try not to be just the realtor and investor. We try to tell them, you know, we we use Team Challenge. Um, they have an adult program here, and we use them to clean out the houses. And, you know, we take stuff and put it in storage if they want it. And. You know, if we see photographs or something we think they want, we're going to save it for them. But they don't have to do anything but get what they want out. And then we come in and take care of the rest of it. You reminded me, one of our long-term subscribers, Bud Thompson, I think he only gets 20 deals a month, but he does about three to one. For every probate that he does, he puts three people in his sphere of influence and eventually gets does business with them. So, you know, that that's one thing that I think a lot of our agents do ignore. You know, they do it and okay, it's a one time deal and they move on. But in the mm-hmm. process of doing that 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 transaction, you meet, you know, multiple errors and you meet a lot of people that, that were impressed with the job you did. Put them in your regular sphere of influence as though you had sold them a house or, you know, it yeah. listed and sold one of their properties and call in regularly, ask them for business. Great idea. Well, you know, if I was somebody that did not, like we have the, the RIA here, but if I was somebody that did not have the RIA here, I was like a real estate agent or something, 
I would put together a program for them, and you know, like some of the other realtors, and bring in them to speak about, um, you know, about probates and you know, they were estate planning and other things mm-hmm. because they were like, I mean, even though we've gotten, you know, we have our meeting, we've got we've got like multiple guest speakers and they can speak on multiple stuff. We can have somebody on estate planning, somebody on probates. We've got another one on bankruptcy. Um, you know, we and how to structure your corporations and stuff like that. So we've got now a whole bunch of people to call on for guest speakers, which running a group, getting a guest speaker in there sometimes is like you rack your brains to make sure you get the best one. So Sure. I'd put together a Great group stuff, if Camille. I didn't have a group. Yeah. So. yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. Any any other okay. thoughts? Or thank you so much for sharing with the group. I'm sure a lot of people learned a lot from what you had to say. Any Anything else you can think of to share? And I think that's it. I'm fixing to go celebrate my All right. birthday, and I've got a fresh thank glass so- of wine. We're sitting out by the lake. <laughs> and I it took me it took me three weeks to get you to show up because every Thursday at one o'clock you had an appointment with an attorney. So I'm I glad, know, you, had, I'm glad you had enough 1230. of a break. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thanks so much for doing it. We really appreciate it. Okay. Camille. Take care. Y'all have a great one. Bye bye. We have all right, bye. We have two more in the queue, guys. We have plenty of time for more. Just hit star six and hit one. And next up is phone number ending in 7428. You're up next. Hey, this is Dave out here in uh, in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing? Hey, Dave. Great. How about you? Doing great. I'm I'm a new subscriber. Just got my first lift uh, and was working through that. I, I had a couple little questions on the mechanics of things. I signed up for um, the Mojo Dialer and uh was going through my list and loading the numbers um in and it looked like there was uh i was expecting i guess multiple numbers for the pr um but it looks like in some cases that's the case other cases there's uh other people's numbers which i'm guessing are somehow related to the pr um and in i'm primarily going to be cold calling them prospecting them and I'm an investor. I'm I'm not an agent. I'm not licensed. So my main focus is is investing, and I've got a good team together. But um, yeah, I was just wondering if uh, when you when you make those dials uh, with someone other than the PR, or in some cases I've seen when I was doing probates in the past, there was multiple PRs. I wasn't sure if there was a way to delineate that or whether they were just typically somehow related to or or um through the skip tracing process how those yeah other so names get on there yeah. yes tim I, i'll i'll take that because we've kind of set the algorithms up to get the numbers and and so i can tell you kind of tell you what it is so typically the first number in the first column and actually the first two columns are generally a cell phone number that is directly referenced to the PR, if it's possible to get uh, more than one to that same number, we'll give you a second cell phone number. The third and fourth are landlines or other what we refer to as referential numbers. And you are correct. We're trying to give you as many possible ways to get in touch with that person as possible. First number being the best shot and you know degrading down to as many as four. Um, and the, the reality is you, know, you kind of need to begin the call by just saying, I'm I'm trying to reach whoever that person is, and if the person that you're talking to uh, doesn't know them, has no idea who that is, then you've simply got a wrong number. And if you begin the call that way, you're not going to be you know out in the weeds. If you're you know you start talking about probate and all the rest of that when you first get them on the phone, that's probably not the best way to start the call to begin with. So just begin it like you would a, a, a friendly phone call. Hey, I'm trying to reach uh, Sally Jones, and uh, is this the right number for Sally? And if they don't know Sally Jones, you move on. Sure, sure. So that was interesting. You, you had mentioned that the first two columns are, did you, is it fair to say that those are always cell phones? Not always, but, but generally speaking, that's what's there. We're going to try and fill the columns up with as many numbers as we can get that pass through the algorithms that we have. And generally speaking, 
The first two are most often cell phone numbers, and that's generally the best way to, to kind of look at it is that we're trying to get you a cell phone number that's directly referring to the PR, but it's also possible that that's not a number that we can reach at all. So if we don't, we push whatever numbers we can to get them there to give you the best option to get in touch with that person. And there's only so many things we can do. Sometimes there are numbers that are listed on the docket. Sometimes they aren't. Sometimes they're inaccurate. And that's why we go through a really elaborate process. We've got through, we've, there's several things that we do to try to proof not only that out, but also the, uh, the correct mailing address for the PR because we want to make sure that's really kind of the hallmark of our service is the good phone numbers and good addresses for the PRs. Everything else is kind of incidental and so we try to do the best job we can with that. Okay. Makes sense. That Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'd noticed that there were actually some some lead records that actually had uh, the first phone number. There wasn't a second, but there was a third and a fourth. So maybe they didn't qualify right. as that cell phone type. Yep, very possible that's the case, or we just didn't have anything. Each each column sort of represents a different algorithm. So if it if it's not sure. if there's nothing in the second one, it's because whatever our criteria is for that, uh, it was unable to populate one with that, so it moved down to the next criteria to populate the third column. Sure, sure, okay, that makes sense. And and um, yes, one of the previous. Um, Callers had mentioned that she was using the brochure, which is a, a kind of like a realtor agent um, type brochure. Do you guys have anything like that from an investor side? You bet. If you'll just if you'll just uh, drop a note to support at alltheleads.com, we'll have somebody from the mail team give you a buzz and uh, and talk you through what we might be able to do to help you out. Okay, great, great. Yeah, and. Um, it's, it sounds like the majority of the subscribers are, are agents. I was going to, my one little bit of feedback so far, and I've, I've still got to dive in a bit, so it might be a little premature. But, yeah, if there was any more or additional, a diff, maybe a different section for those of us that are primarily or, or only investing, um, I know there's a lot of overlap there, but uh, um, some of that might be helpful for, for someone like myself, I guess. So here, here's an interesting yeah, question. And, and Go ahead. I, I just want to finish what I was going to say. It's an interesting question because one of the things that, you know, we when we began this, we began it uh, primarily because of, of the background of uh, Jim and Chad, them both being agents. I came from the investor side of this, providing support for the investor side of the community, as did Tom. So we just targeted agents to begin with because it was an underserved niche. And investors through the years have found us. We still haven't focused on it. Now we know that we are. We need to do some build out in, in regard to the investor side, and we are actively, you know, pursuing that as we move forward. We're actively pursuing uh, more investors, and we will continue to do some differentiation. And one of the things that we kind of uh, have have a hopper in there for the investor side that's getting filled up, and we're getting there slowly but surely, but. We always have investors and, and uh, agents on the calls, and in reality, we encourage both investors and agents to work together. If you're an agent and you're not an investor, you know it's really smart for you to go find several investors to work with so that if you are in a situation where you need cash offers on properties to get stuff moved quickly, in particular in regard to probate, you've got somebody on your team to do that. Vice versa, if you're an investor, you definitely should have an agent to work with so that if you find something that is specifically a listing opportunity and they're not going to be, you're not going to be able to buy it, but you need to be able to have some place to flip that to an agent, that's a great I scratch your back, you scratch mine opportunity. So we definitely know that's that's the right answer, and that helps you build a good solid team. Uh, and you know, Tom made a good point earlier, I think, about that. You know, that being the value first approach, bring them both to the table. If you're both of them yourself, you know, you kind of got both your bases covered, but. A lot of a lot of folks Absolutely. on these calls are one or the other. Absolutely. Yeah. What and what I was gonna what I was gonna add to that is because I was both for many years. The you'll know in your initial conversation. You know, I, my guess is about ten percent of these are gonna have a compelling urgency, and there's they're not even gonna consider waiting to list it. And the other ninety percent are they 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 want to sell. They don't want top dollar, but the urgency isn't there that they're gonna take a thirty forty percent discount. 
you know, or even a 20% discount. So approach, I, I always... Did we lose you, Jim? Oh, okay, yeah, I thought I cut out there. Yeah, I think I think we lost Jim there for a minute. He'll probably call back in. Um, and, and I have no idea where he was going with that, so it sort of is what it is. He apparently, oh, Jim just said they lost power in his office, so uh, we'll find out what's going on with that, and that's what burped his line. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I think the whole point there is is you know as we put that. Um, you know, we, we're, we're trying to, we're, we definitely know that we need to enhance our value to the investor side and that, that along with divorce, uh, are the two things kind of we're, we're working hardest on right now to add the same level of support, both from a mailing standpoint, uh, even down to the website side to, uh, make sure that we have that same level of opportunity for the investor that we provided for the agent side. And we're going to continue to work that. I think that's kind of the key to this is that. We need to get better as we go, and that's how we we continue to grow. And Tim, that the, makes sense. Power, the power the power went out of my office in the mid sentence. <laughs> so yeah, we we, we saw, bud. I had to side back in. Sorry about that. Um, the the one thing I started to say is I tell both groups take the same approach. You know that you're a real estate consultant or expert, and how can I help you? And I always tell investors. One thing you're never going to hear another investor tell these people, if you're not in a big hurry and you're looking to get top dollar, I can recommend a good realtor. So, I mean, as soon as you tell them that, you're going to gain their confidence that you have their best interest at heart. And I promise you no other investors are doing that. So the reality is it's two different groups, and, you know, you just you want to come across as helping them the best way you can, whether you're a realtor or an investor. In the long run, it's going to pay off. A lot of those – listings that you send to realtors, not a lot, but I would say 5 to 10% of the time, they think they're not in a hurry. They'll list with an agent, and then three, four months later, it doesn't sell. They get a lot more motivated. You want to make sure you have an, that agent will have your back and refer them back to you if the situation changes. Sure. Absolutely. Makes sense? You bet. You bet. Anything else we can help you with? That's it. That's it for now. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. We have two more in the queue. Next up is phone number ending in 7577. You're up next. Hi. Um, my name is Yvonne Ivey, and I'm from Southern California. Um, I'm not a subscriber to all the leads for all the leads, but I do um, use the mailbox motivator and have a website, so, so I'm familiar with um, with the company. Um, but um, my question is, um, I met with an attorney and uh, he presented me with an opportunity to market to pre-probate leads um, that have real estate. Um, then what I would do is if they were, and basically I would educate them on, you know, the process and, and um, of um, not really probate, but more going in for the real estate side. And then um, if they were interested and needed an attorney, then I would refer them back to the attorney. And I wanted to see if you have ever encountered that or are there people that, I'm, I guess, guess it's basically dealing with obituaries and people that recently died who, who don't, haven't gone through probate. Yeah, it's similar to the question we had earlier. We we do know in in the really competitive markets, there's a lot of investors that work the obituaries. Similar to what the earlier caller mentioned, though, that if it comes, we choose not to do that. We feel like it's a bit predatory, and you're going to make people matter than it's worth in the long run. Um, okay. You know that data is out there, but like we told, like the earlier lady said, if it comes recommended from a hospice, a nursing home, or an attorney, it's a whole different story. It's a warm recommendation, and uh -huh. chances are you know there's a need there. So, I, I, and as a matter of fact, I think for anybody on this call, that's a great idea. You know, reach out to the, to the person in charge at your local nursing home. They have beds they have to fill, and they have people come in 
all the time that need to sell their, you know, pre-death, pre-need, you know, pre-probate, that need to uh-huh. sell property before, you know, before the worst happens and they, you know, they need to pay for their care. So same thing. Yeah, if the attorney is going to give you those leads, I would work them very similar to the way you're working the probate, you know, that uh-huh. I have a list of services. How can I help you? Um, the good news is, you know, it, it, I mean, the bad news, it may, they may need you right away. And, you know, they may not, it may be a little longer of a lead, but, but the good news is you're certainly going to get them before anybody else does. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause they're, they're providing me the leads, but it's not, um, it's, it's from a service that they get leads from. Huh. So okay. It's, this is an attorney. Yeah, this is an attorney, and they have they have provided me with leads that they subscribe to, and these I are pre probate. Yeah, in that case, I mean, try them carefully. Um, it sounds like obituary leads, and it sounds like you may be calling people cold that just recently had a death in their family. And Correct. That's exactly how it is. Yeah, I would just say you're going to have to be very thick skinned and. Um, I, you know, I would never tell you not to do it, but just be very extra empathetic. And um, I think you're, you know, Tim. Do you have any opinion on that? I, we, I, other than other than the really hardcore investors that are willing to call a thousand people to get a deal, I haven't heard uh-huh. a lot of success stories doing that. Have you, Tim? Well, I mean, it's where we target, and and obviously, you know, you sort of began this by. Talking about the fact that you're kind of getting your your uh, your data, <laughs> you're getting your data elsewhere. That's fine, and you know we're happy to work with you. That's certainly we we love having you as a customer. But I think the other point that Jim is making is that it really takes a a special kind of person to to be able to talk to someone who literally has just experienced a death and uh, you know be able to to deal with them. The other problem with that is that. Uh, you're going to be getting in touch with people who may or may not be the personal representative. There may not be one that's granted, depending on what's going on in your state. Uh, if they're going to go represent themselves, not get an attorney and do it per se, then that's another issue. But your your chances of success with them, uh, you're going to find a bluebird along the way from an investor standpoint where that happens and there's this instant need to uh, – sell the property because they have a financial need that the sooner they can meet it, the better off they're going to go be. And that's what makes these good investor leads. However, you know, if, if you kind of look at it mathematically, you may find one or two out of a hundred that you might be providing good service for. And the other 98 are unfortunately going to at least initially feel like that call is an inappropriate call and they're in uncomfortable hearing from you because the, the wound is so fresh. It also okay. doesn't mean that their phone's not going to ring uh, 20 times from investors who literally read the you know newspaper ads every day and don't mind calling obits. It does happen. It's unfortunate. It's kind of the hard part of the business to deal with. I think there's a compassionate way to do it as well. But I'm going to go back to what I said, kind of started with. We feel like the best use of your time is exactly what we're providing, which is the probate leads after there's okay. been a, a filing we know that's the person that you need to talk to. They're put up in from a legal standpoint to take your call. So that's why we think it's a better way to go. Okay. So 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 stay away. So don't do it. <laughs> I, I, if I were if you were if you were if you were somebody that was asking me, uh, hey Tim, what do you think I ought to do here? I've got this opportunity and I can go one way or the other. I would definitely recommend you pursue the course that we've charted as a more successful and far easier and less stressful way to do this to build a pillar of your business than be getting yelled at all the time by, you know, being called a hearse chaser or an ambulance chaser because in literally in that case you're kind of doing that. Yeah, and I'm a real estate agent, so I don't want to, you know, be labeled that either, you know, by you know, by people in my area because I live in the area where I'd be marketing to. So, yep. yeah. I, can, I can also tell you that there there are people who do this and do it well, and and if you if you've done it enough times, you can begin that call in such a way that uh, you know there are ways to do it, but it's really really requires an incredibly soft, deft, compassionate touch. 
to be able to do that. And even so, you're still going to get yelled at by people no matter how hard you try. They're not going to be comfortable with that phone call simply because they're still in horrible pain and grief. And, you know, look at what happens to people when their pets die. I mean, sometimes they're they're in bad shape for weeks after that. And right. you're talking about, you know, someone that's a family member that they love and all that. So it's just follow our follow our program and maybe consider uh, subscribing to our leads and try that for a month and see how that works for you. Okay, all right. Now, do you have any, uh, know anyone that does it and does it successfully? Because I did post that on the, that question on the, um, all the leads website or Facebook page. Uh, I, think your, I think your best answer is to see if you get any responses back. I do not. I have talked to people along the way, and be, beware, we tested an OBIT program. We, we okay. have a full ability to supply that, and we put it out to several people in a beta test, and the results weren't good. And we beta test everything that we do, and we didn't get good results. So uh, it, it was not there. And I, in, the, in the interest of time, we're almost to the end of our hour here. I'm going to yeah. just say, you know, I, I would recommend you try a different approach maybe and, and not do that because I just don't think it's going to be good for you. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I, I was you just bet. going to add the difference with probate, on average, it's about three and a half months from the date of death. And the Correct. family has passed the grief enough that they've made the decision to hire an attorney and file the probate. It's really an apples and oranges situation. You know, you, you okay. still want to be compassionate, but you're dealing with somebody who who has had more time to get past the grief, and they've okay. made the decision to deal with this and move on. So your results are okay. going to be a lot better. I agree. Well, boy, this okay. is perfect timing. Maybe the first Thank time you. ever we're done in exactly one hour. Um, good call as always, guys. Thank you so much for showing up today. I want to thank the half a dozen people who did participate. And I always like to end these calls the same way. You know, you took the time to be here. You know, you heard some great stories, some great thoughts, some great wins. I want to challenge each of you take one thing, one thought, one idea that inspired you on this call. Go out and put it into practice, and please come back next week and share your results with the group. And by the way, it will be we will be meeting again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern for our role play call, and then we'll have this call next Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern. Thank you so much, guys. Make it a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.